Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well, and today I'm going to do an unboxing review of the 2016 Mercedes AMG GTS, and it is unquestionably one of the most beautiful cars I have ever seen. As you know, I've done a lot of unboxing reviews, and this one truly stands out. But first, I want to thank Mercedes-Benz of Walnut Creek for letting me come on down and film today. So let's get started here. Now, a little bit of background information that I want to give you is that the Mercedes-AMG GTS is the first car to be developed solely in-house by Mercedes-AMG. So Mercedes-AMG, it's basically Mercedes-Benz's uh, in-house high performance division. Think BMW and BMW M. Mercedes AMG is BMW M's direct competitor. And Mercedes AMG, it also has its own engineers. It operates independently of Mercedes Benz. It even has its own CEO. And the AMG GTS, it is considered to be the direct successor to the SLS AMG. And I'm going to get back to more of these interior details in a little bit, but yeah, the interior, it's, it's just as stunning as the exterior. Just take a look at this for a moment. It, it, it's something you just can't take your eyes off of. I mean, this, this car's exterior, it's, it's one of these cars that you... You just kind of go out to your garage in the middle of the night just to stare at it. And it's considered a grand tour. And look at the front, you know, you got those big air intake grills, you had a front splitter, you got 20 inch wheels at the rear, 19 inch wheels up front, you got those really cool red uh, brake calibers as well. Also take a look at the air outlet grills behind the front wheels. That's just to get more air into the engine, which I'll get to very shortly as well. Now, compared to the SLS AMG, uh, this car is missing one thing that the its predecessor had, the gullwing doors. Now, why did Mercedes AMG ditch the gullwing doors? Very simple. Those doors are very heavy, and the idea here was to cut weight. But what's interesting is that the AMG GTS, it rides on an updated and modified version of the SLS AMG's platform, but the wheelbase and overall length was shortened and made even lighter. Take a look at those, you know, those front headlamp with the LED uh, strip there. It's just so smooth, this, the, that exterior, the skin, it's, it's just wow. Again, even from the rear with the, you know, those LED taillights, there's just not a bad angle. Look at those exhaust notes right there. It's just an incredible looking car. And what's cool is that its body structure, it's made up of 93% aluminum. And it even has a space frame chassis that's made from aluminum alloys. And even the engine hood is made from magnesium. Again, they needed to cut weight to, in order to maximize performance. One of the SLS AMG's uh, biggest problems was weight. I also really like this that sort of like rear, you know, fastback, liftback design. Uh, with the way the trunk opens, you'll see that later as well. The proportions, they just got it right here. Compared to the SLS AMG, I love that car too, but this one without question in my mind looks better yeah no I, I again I'm just you know kinda still staring in awe at this because it's so beautiful and these wheels here they're actually cross spoke forged titanium wheels they're optional they cost an extra twelve hundred bucks but, you know, buyers for this car, they have a lot of wheel choices, same with uh, exterior colors, even some nice interior packages. So they can really pick and choose the features they want to really make this car personable to them. Ah, under the hood here. So this is a four liter twin turbo V8. It's got 
503 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. All that power, it goes to the rear wheels via a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission with a manual shifting mode, and there's also paddle shifters on each side of the steering wheel. But unlike, let's say, the Jaguar F-Type and the Porsche 911, Mercedes-AMG has, it has no plans for a manual uh, transmission option. So don't hold your breath waiting for that to come because it's not. Now, what's interesting with this engine setup here, it's considered as a mid uh, front mid-engine setup because the engine, it, it sits inside the car's, inside the car's wheelbase, meaning it, it's pushed inwards about as far as possible for improved weight distribution, which is 4753 between the front and rear axle. Oh yes, now it's time for this interior. And again, I'm gonna go out and say this. I think this is hands down the greatest interior I have ever seen in a production car. In, in a modern production car, let's say. I, I, I don't know how they can make it any better. Uh, there were a couple little faults with it. I'll get to those as well, but they're very, very minor. And it's, you know, when you compare this interior to let's say the Jaguar F-Type, uh, I've done the Roadster and the uh, Coupe uh, unboxing reviews as well. Please check those out. They're really interesting. Uh, those were great interiors too, but this is just even better. It just it, it just takes everything you know a step beyond. It's luxurious. It's sporty. Um, it, it, it's unique. It, it reminds me of like you know the great coach building days that are you know about gone. You know, in, in this particular car, it has the exclusive interior package, and it adds this red pepper Napa black exclusive leather, they call it, that costs an extra $3,600, and you have these AMG performance seats. But just take a moment and look. This is, it's all leather. Uh, note that uh, AMG crest in the uh, center uh, glove box, I'm sorry, center uh, armrest compartment there. Lots of aluminum. There is, there is not a cheap component to be found anywhere whatsoever. All right, but now I want to start up this engine for you and uh, take a listen to that and I'll be back in just a moment. So that was uh, that new twin turbo V8. Uh, Mercedes AMG claims it goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in three and a half seconds. And the car goes the standing quarter mile in 11 and a half seconds. Top speed is electronically limited to 193 miles per hour. Electronically limited, that essentially means that this car is capable of going faster, but Mercedes AMG really doesn't want you to for probably very good reasons. But 193 miles per hour is, it's fast enough, trust me. So as I was saying earlier about this interior, you, you actually, you, you're sitting pretty low to the ground, I noticed, uh, but it's still very spacious inside. If it's, you know, only two passengers, there is no rear seat, unlike, say, the Porsche 911, but that car's rear seat is almost useless for human beings let's let's put it that way okay so this is mercedes uh command touchscreen system it's an 8.4 inch screen and i found the display to be of really high quality uh you know the text is always very easy to read it controls everything from you know the navigation radio media your phone and various vehicle functions as well And I actually did like it better than uh, BMW's iDrive system. Uh, it, it was just, for me personally, easier to, to navigate through the controls and the various functions. 
Uh, I know that's kind of subjective, but that's, you know, how I feel. And it's controlled by this rotary dial and touchpad located just ahead of the center armrest in front of the gear uh, selector. So the rotary dial, it actually performs many of the same functions as the touchpad, but the touchpad, as you can see it right here, it, it looks cooler and it can do a few more functions. But I, I still prefer the rotary dial because it, it's easier to access uh, for the driver. And another nice little touch I noticed is it, it has this, you know, this back button that's also really easy to access. And I did notice with this touchpad here, uh, you sometimes need an extra swipe, you know, to sort of get the intended function recognized. But what's really cool about that touchpad is that you can slide the cursor around to any destination using the touchpad. And then you just sort of pinch and zoom in and out of, uh, of a destination, kind of like you do on, on your smartphone. And here you can also control the uh, different driving modes. There's three of them, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. They optimize the damping characteristics of your current driving situation. And basically, uh, what is damping? It's it, damping controls the travel speed and the resistance of the car suspension. So if a dampening system isn't there, the car would otherwise, for an example, release the energy it absorbs from, like, say, hitting a bump at an uncontrolled rate. And this system keeps it everything intact. You also have this nice dual zone... Uh, uh, climate control system here and I really like the fact that they're these aren't like flat buttons they're like kind of like toggle switches and it's just a nice design feature okay so how does this new AMG GTS drive well without question it has this very precise steering there's lots of power from such a rather compact turbo V8 uh, compared to the SLS AMG, that had a naturally aspirated V8, and it sounded great, but I think this car's V8 sounds really good too, but overall, the, the, this car, it just gripped the road through high-speed corners, like, really, really well, and it has a double wishbone suspension, that really contributes to everything. And it even reminds me a lot of the McLaren 650S, I did an unboxing review of that as well, and... McLaren built some of the best handling supercars on the planet, and uh, this, you know, this AMG GTS was almost like literally right up there with that. Oh, another thing that I didn't like about the interior, there, are, you know, like, as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple little bits. Um, I don't like the location of the uh, gear selector. It's it's too far back on the center console. It's, um, there it is, it's right behind the, uh, the touchpad and the rotary dial. Uh, so why did Mercedes put it all the way back there when it should be a little more forward on the center console? It's because they needed to make room for, get this, cup holders. Seriously. Uh, Americans especially want to have cup holders in all their cars, regardless if it's a family sedan or something like the AMG GTS and it was just pretty much a design requirement and some of the functionality had to be sacrificed in order to make those cup holders fit. But going back to how it drives, compared to the SLS AMG, uh, this car, it is a better daily driver and it's better on track. In fact, uh, Motor Trend even ranked it its number one best driver's car for 2015. It beat out the likes of the Porsche Cayman GT4, Bentley Continental GT3, Chevrolet Camaro Z06, and even the Mercedes AMG C63S. Those are all fantastic cars. So some of the other uh, extra features this particular car is equipped with, it has this exclusive interior trim that costs an extra $2,650, carbon fiber exterior trim for $5,300, a carbon fiber engine cover, uh, $1,500, and that gloss uh, carbon fiber trim inside, 
There's another 200 bucks, and even the red seatbelts cost $500, as well as that panorama uh, roof you saw, that was another $1,200. And the base price of the AMG G, uh, GTS is just under $130,000. All in with all those extra features, this specific card came to just over $154,000. So compared to the competition, that is actually a very reasonable price. Now, uh, the Jaguar F-Type R with a supercharged V8, that also starts at uh, well over $100,000. Uh, a Porsche 911 Carrera, just the entry price for that is 90 grand for the base car. Uh, there's also the McLaren 570S and 570GT, those cost around $180,000. Uh, the Aston Martin Vantage, that's also well over 100 about $110,000 and there's even the Nissan GTR which is about $105,000 even though uh, that's much more track focused than this car but they're still sort of competitors especially when it comes to pricing but in my personal opinion I think that the Mercedes AMG GTS its most direct competitor is the Porsche 911 so Legend has it that there was a gentleman's agreement uh, among uh, BMW and Mercedes, as well as Porsche, not to go after the 911 for whatever reasons. But clearly with this Mercedes AMG GTS, that gentleman's agreement has been canceled. Um, just what this car is capable of and performance, its price, its target audience, it is clearly a 911 fighter and it is a very, very good one. Now, I also know that's a really good competitor because it has a lot of variants coming up, such as the there's going to be a convertible, the AMG GTR, and the future Black Series, and Porsche is the absolute best at building variants from the 911 Turbo, all the convertibles, and the GT3 and GT3 RS. So, everyone... I'm out of time for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any more questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Any suggestions for future cars you'd like to me to do an unboxing review of, also leave those suggestions in the comments section. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Car Buzz YouTube channel and check out the full review of the 2016 Mercedes AMG GTS on carbuzz.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.